progress. All right, this will be the next work in progress on the Graven Labs, um, Hulk and Stan Lee. So, um, so these pants that I have here, these aren't actually the production pants. They've changed the material. Um, so basically, um, I think they're going to change a little bit, but I am going to, um, I sent Marcus a message. Does he want these torn up or not? He's like, well, I really don't care because these are the production pieces, but we're going to tear them up a little bit. Um, not too bad. What I don't want to do is I'm not going to, I may not put any holes in it. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a file and, um, be right back. I wanted a piece of wood or something, so I want to um, take these and we're going to, um, it's really not a thick enough piece of wood. I'm going to see the stretch of this. I want to file the edges, not really cut them. Let's see, that's going to work. I'm going to do this kind of number. This file, this file's really messy. Um, I have another one somewhere. Where is it? Let's use one of these maybe. I want to tear them up like this. I think. Let's see what this does. Let me see if I can clean this file off. This is really what I, what I, what I want to use. Um, one second. All right, so I clean that file off a little bit. I'm using the edge of the wood here, just kind of doing this on the edges. Just putting some holes in it here and there. That looks torn and not cut. Um, so these scissors or something are cut, it's going to look cut and not torn. So we're going to do that around the edges and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. Once I do this, I'm going to put them on, and then we're going to get Hulk glued together. Because all we really got left is Stan's portrait and the base. Those are the two major areas that are left on this piece. So I got this wrapped up this weekend. I did not get any work on it this week. Uh, work has been crazy busy. And then guys trim off these little straggling bits. Like that. And now we're getting a torn looking not a cut look. On the Maddox Hulk, I used scissors, and it just didn't look real natural. It looked okay. Making a bit of mess, but it's gonna look good. Alright, so I'm gonna do that to both sides and we'll come back. 
All right, I'll try to do this so my head's not in the frame as much as it was last time. So I got these torn up pretty good around the edges. Um, and now this is like really the first time I've tried to put these on him. So what I want to do is kind of get them on and see if I can put any holes in it. But I want to put holes in an area where you don't see the seams because um, of the legs, because I am going to glue them together into one piece. So just go on. do is I don't have to wrap this around the leg like this to glue them on. Alright, so that's how they fit. I may just um Go ahead and get the legs glued on, and then maybe I'll selectively cut some holes in these after they're glued on. So let's try that. So I'm going to wrap this around the leg like this. I'm going to do one leg at a time because it's too hard to deal with the epoxy and try to get it, you know. So I'm not sure what material they're going to use um, on the production pieces. I think they're getting away from the corduroy and they're going to do more like a denim, like a jean material. Okay, so I'm going to go get one of the legs. just do a nice amount of uh, epoxy in there and then get them on the base and then once this leg's dry I'll do the same to the other leg now the other leg I gotta show you something uh, real quick this uh, peg on this one is loose so I'm gonna epoxy that back once it's time for this leg I'll epoxy that in there um, I'll epoxy it in there and then epoxy it to there Probably get away with even doing it this way. Doing that. Nah, I think I'll do it this way. I'm not sure why I just did. Oops, sorry, I don't have my mic on. So yeah, this uh this peg came loose, but this he needs to be he needs to stand in the base while the epoxy dries just to make sure everything is aligned correctly. So, um, the thing about 30 minute epoxy, even though it says 30 minutes, if you mix a bunch of it up, it gets hot and it cures pretty quick. So, um, even though it says 30 minutes, it's really not 30 minute epoxy. So I'm going to put this leg back over in the base. I'm gonna mix some of that epoxy up a less Leslie so it's gonna smell. Oh no it's not. It's a different epoxy. The I bought some uh, uh JB Weld epoxy and uh, for whatever reason it smells way different than my other epoxies and uh, every time I mix it up my wife's like what's that smell? Alright, so 30 minute epoxy, slow cure, right? It's supposed to be slow cure. I'm gonna get all the necessary tools out. Need a popsicle stick to mix it. I'm gonna need maybe some cute, some paper towels, some alcohol for any ooze out. 
hopefully I don't have any ooze out there. Right, let's see what else. I think that'll, I think that should do it. All right, am I in frame? All right, sorry for all the noise. My little freaky chihuahua dog constantly barking at the kids. And if they run around, she freaks out. All right, so we're gonna mix up a decent amount of this. Okay, so that's about seven and a half mils. Okay, so there's a lot here. This is gonna kick off pretty quick. I'm actually gonna get one of my cheap um, paint brushes. You can buy epoxy brushes, but they're kind of expensive for what they are. So I just got some of these cheap paint brushes I buy a box at a time at Hobby Lobby. And so we're gonna mix this, I'm gonna mix it slowly because I don't wanna kick this off. This is where probably way too much epoxy, but Yes, it's way too much. Probably could have gone away with a quarter of this, but I'd rather have too much and not need it than be in the middle of gluing something and find out I need more. So I'm just gonna stir it slowly because if I stir it real fast, it'll make it kick off quicker. It's just important that you have it mixed thoroughly. So once this like while this leg is drying, I'll work on Stan's portrait. I'll pull up some reference photos because he's got some age spots, um, very distinctive age spots that he has. Okay. Okay, so this key is really deep. So maybe I had this right amount because the. We'll see. What I want to do is get it on all sides. Okay, throw that away. coating there throw that away and then we're probably gonna be off frame here but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this epoxy that I have in here I'm gonna coat the key to the other end the male end Starting to kick off already. It's gotta work quick. Okay. Throw that brush away. Let's make sure we put the leg on the right direction. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't get a lot of ooze out. Okay, so. Some ooze out over here, just fine. I 
I'm going to wait for this to kind of kick off a little bit. And then I'm going to um, put it on the base with the other leg. Am I still in frame? So I'm just going to lose that right here, which is fine. And around the other edge. So that's okay. So I'm just getting a little alcohol here. So I'm gonna hold this for a little bit, for a few minutes, like this in this position. And then once this starts to kick off a little bit more, I'm gonna throw it on the base with the other leg. And that way um, I should ensure that everything's lined up correctly. as this leg kind of settles into that key I'm getting a little more ooze out so I'm just going to keep cleaning this up as it goes around I gotta be careful though because I'm going to start eating through the paint with the alcohol so um, I can't do it too much so I'll come back once I get this kind of set okay so while that, that first leg is drying I'm going to check it every once in a while just to make sure I don't get any more ooze out uh, we're going to work on Stan's portrait so initially I've got this in a layer of just Donald Rez um, uh, skin uh, their flesh primer uh, I'm going to go ahead and base coat this with um, da, 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 da. let's see I'm looking at a I just pull a, pulled up a straight on view of his face so I've got this bucks getting tan I think maybe a good base coat. From garagekiss.us. This may be a little light. Yeah, it's a little light, it's alright. I've got some stencils here I'm going to use for the age spots. I'm going to put those on relatively early. We're going to bury them between all the um, skin tones. So I'm going to start off pretty pale and kind of work my way down. So I've never done a portrait on, on video because it's, it's such a back and forth process. I mean, it is with everyone, but I, I, when I do skin, it's like I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just messing around until I get the look I want, really. I kind of get a plan in my head, but all right. So there's a, a layer of buckskin tan. Kind of start with that, and then I use the African flesh tones um, mostly for skin tones. Um, I find that the other ones, that the other skin tones are pretty good, but they're too pink for my for my. For my uh, taste, so I need some. So I got some medium African. Uh, I have some light, light African. So most of Stan's age spots are up in this area of his forehead, and he's got a couple right in here. Um, other than that, his, his skin's pretty uh, pretty clean. So I've got these stencils here that are just kind of random patterns. Um, I'm going to use the tightest one right here. I'm going to use this area of the stencil. I'm going to come in here, just real. I'm going to back it off real lightly, just kind of mist on some of these spots. I don't want to put it right against the surface, and it'll have a hard edge. So I'm going to leave it kind of backed off and just kind of mist those on here and there, and we'll see what we get. This is a whole new. Uh, technique for me so we'll see what happens <laughs> this could could work could not work 
So I'm gonna do with the light, um, light African flesh. So, uh, again, sorry for all the background noise. My house is always constantly loud. I need to get a toothpick to clean up the tip of this bottle. I would typically start with the base coat of this light African flesh. It's kind of like my go-to starting point. So let's see how this works. Never used these before. So again, we got the most kind of the most aged spots are right in this area. I'm gonna back this off. It's gonna look really weird at first. Kind of see what we got. See the effect there. You really don't know what you're getting until you pull the stencil away. Kind of see the effect we're getting there. Like the smaller uh, bits of these stems, you gotta get closer, otherwise, the paint doesn't go through it and hit the surface. Dry tip. So I'm going to do this for a while and I'll come back. Okay, so this is where we are after the light African flesh. It's looking kind of leprosy. I'm going to go back in and do this again with the dark African flesh. Semi-transparent dark African flesh. And I switched stencils. I found this, this one I have. It's got a little tighter pattern, which I like better.
try to try to keep these stencils still always you get kind of a, a fuzzy look it's starting to look like something the hard part is holding the piece where you want it while spraying So it's looking a little weird right now, but we're going to bury all this underneath uh, several, kind of using this as a prop. We're going to bury this underneath the several layers of other skin tones. I'm get a little tighter here so I get some tighter spots. We're going to start here in a second, start bearing some of this. Okay, so this is kind of like what we got right now, looking a little weird. Uh, so another thing I'm going to do is I wish I had a semi-transparent um, the only thing I wish that they that Jesse offered was a I'm not, I'm not sure if he does, a semi-transparent light African flush. Um, I'm finding that that's what I like to kind of go back and berry stuff with at the top of the nose here a little bit there we go okay so we got this kind of weird looking look now what I'm going to do I'm going to add a little thinner to that I think Let me get some uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. All right, get, my, get my little stand here.
I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back with the light African flesh. I'm gonna add thinner to it. Thin it out a little bit. Love Jesse's paints, not a, fan, not a fan of the bottles. Come on. They get clogged up really easily. No, it's gonna explode on me. I gotta work on getting this paint out. Hold on. All right, finally got it out. Okay, so I got this paint in here thinned about one to one with the, the thinner. I'm gonna start just kind of missing this. This is the light African flesh, thinned down pretty good. Start burying kind of those age spots we did. more natural now. Let me go back and do another round with the, uh, the dark African flesh after I do this. Give another layer. I find that the light African flesh is a really good base tone for Caucasian skin. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go back and do another round of that um, age spotting on top of this with the dark, semi transparent. the same spots. Mostly the forehead. That's where that my little reference photo shows that he's got most of them.
frame? Am I frame? I don't know. Right there. Let me bring my photo again. Gotta type in my freaking password. Okay, so they're mostly on his forehead, a little bit on his cheeks here. Okay. Kind of looks like a leopard or a lizard at this point. I'm going to get this stencil right to the skin so I get a couple hard ones. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and blend that back in with the semi transparent thin down or the light African flesh thin down. transparent paint. Again, just back it off and mist it on. This paint's too too opaque. I'm not. Um, I wish it was thinner. Okay. I'm gonna go in with some. Uh, Transparent. Let's see, I want to do maybe a little pink. Where is it? Virgin flash, no. Pale flash, no. Maybe a little garage kit's flesh. On the cheeks and stuff. Okay, this is a garage kit's flush. It's gonna miss this on. So, it's, so he's not so tan. I'm not sure if it's showing up in the camera, but you can see the age spots underneath the skin there. 
And I've got new, my new pan pastels too, I'm gonna use. So I'll probably do most of the shading with that. Okay, it's like that. Now I'm gonna take this uh, Garage Kits flesh, I'm gonna add that. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the semi-transparent medium flesh, African flesh. I'm gonna use that as a shadow color, I think. Get in here and try to do some shading. Kind of see underneath the chin there, we're starting to get some shape. Got a little thinner to it. Maybe help prevent some dry tipping. Very little paint's coming out, so they're just building it real slow. Back up and hit the cheekbone. It's a soft shape, so back up quite a bit. I 
I doing on space? We're doing good. Just getting dry tip. Maybe put a little retarder in there too. So I got some thinner end retarder in here. The paint's coming out this slow, you don't know, see that you're doing anything until right when it starts to build up. Gonna do, I'll go in and do most of the shading with the pastel. This is kind of giving me a base line. I tend to go in and do all the wrinkles and stuff with pastel that just have better control. This airbrush kind of get the basic shapes. But now he's getting some dimension to his face. The hairline. Okay, it's looking pretty good, I think.
not saying a whole lot just because I'm working on getting this all in. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's like the basic. Skin tone and. Shadowing. Let me go seal this. Yeah, then I keep keep working it. All right, so it's got pretty much the established established shadows and skin tone. Um, So I'm going to seal this and then we're going to do some pastel work. I can still see the H spots coming through pretty good. It's very subtle, but they're there. Um, I wonder if I should do some with a darker color. I almost want to do like a gray. Let's see. One second. Uh, Got some warm grays. Nah, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna leave it. So I'm gonna go seal this and see what it looks like after it's sealed. All right, so I want to seal this with some Krylon uh, matte. And I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna add some of this Pan Pastels highlight. This is a burnt sienna tint. And I'm just gonna hit this on the tops, top parts. You can see I hit the nose a little bit already. I'm gonna hit this on the cheeks. And I got a, a clean brush right here that I can use to blend it. So I put a little bit on, like this. And I just use this clean blush, brush to kind of blend it in, just like that. Blow away the excess, blend it in. I love using pastels. I get, I have so more, I feel much more comfortable using them to do this kind of thing than I do an airbrush. I've established the darkest skin tone I want, so I'm not gonna do any more shadows. I'm just gonna go in and add some highlights. I may try to do some more of the age spots with the pastels, we'll see.
this. Again, it's looking a little stark right now, a little contrast. We're going to blend it all in as we get closer to the end. a light mist of the light African flesh over this really thin down I let you looking a little punchy to me Just didn't want to do that didn't want to get that in there I kind of lost some of my age spots. I'm going to try to do them again with the pastels. All right, so I'm going to do this for a little while and I'll come back. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with some pastels in the, um, the stencils. And I got some raw umber here. I'm just going to put it right on the skin tight and I'm going to punch through it. Just like that. And I'm going to I'm going to miss another layer of the light African real light African flesh over this. My highlights are a little too punchy. I'm going to bring them down. I guess once I get this done, I'll seal it first, and then I'll do that. Feel that again. cheeks and then uh, we'll seal it and come back. I'm not sure if I was in frame when I was doing that.
here and do. A little raw umber in the underneath the eyes. This color seems to be doing good as far as adding a little more shape. That seems to be doing a good job of adding another little tone to us. See, this is how I work. I just kind of futz around until I get a look I like. There's no real method to the madness. All right, so I'm gonna mess around with this for a little bit and I'll come back. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. I'm taking some burnt sienna and I'm just taking my brush and I'm, I'm putting on my brush and getting most of it off. I'm kind of going in here and just kind of dabbing on this and just blending all this in. And that seems to be doing pretty good. Um, blending in the highlights, <laughs> the shadows and stuff. It's real light. What I wasn't liking was the um, the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. It's too much. So what I'm gonna do next is I'll probably get the hair base coated in, and that'll give me a better idea of what my skin's looking like. I'm just kind of taking this burnt sienna and hitting the. Shadows a little bit. <sighs> and just kind of going over it real lightly, just kind of blend it in a little bit so it's not so stark. Sorry, get my camera with my glasses. Okay. It's not looking too bad. It's like real contrasting the camera. Like really contrasty. It's not that contrasty. So uh hopefully when I this goes process the video process it won't look so punchy because it's looking really punchy on the back of my camera.
kind of wish I had a tone between uh, this tone and that tone, but I don't. Um, I've got a darker tone, but I want to mix them up. So I think um, it's looking pretty good. And uh, I can probably uh, glue the other Hulk leg on while I seal this and kind of this dry a little bit. I think I'm gonna try to hit those um, H spots one more time. back below the sea. I'm just going to pick it up with my paper towel here. Soften them up a little bit. That's looking pretty good there. I'm gonna go seal this and see what it looks like. And I'll come back. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like. It's looking punchy in camera because I think that it's under exposing for my towel, but uh, in person it looks really good. So I'm happy with this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base coat the hair because uh, then that will give me a better idea of what the skin can look like. And I can always adjust them further with pastel. So that's what I do. I kind of get them where I think I need them. And then I, um, I'll put the hair in. I need to clean out my airbrush because this is going to get all messy if I don't clean that out. Um, then I put the hair in, then I put the eyes in, and then I'll go back and I'll, uh, if I need any more adjustments on the, um, the skin tones, I'll do that. Let's see, I have a brush out here for cleaning. Airbrush. Put that in there. It's not a pastel brush. So I'm gonna uh, clean my airbrush, and we'll come back and we'll base cut the hair. All right. So the base of the hair to base blah, blah, blah. to base the hair, I'm gonna mix up some white um, and black here and make a kind of a dark gray. And then we're gonna uh, highlight, just kind of dry brush it. So I got my uh, Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics here. Uh, a little bit of water. I got more than I need, obviously, always. So I'm just gonna take this, um, take a little bit of black and mix it to this white. Cause Stan's hair is pretty much silver. So I don't wanna start with black, I'm gonna start with a gray. Right about there.
really like these acrylics. I need to get some more. They're going so smooth and they cover very well. So I'm using the, the tip of the brush here to kind of mimic the hairline going into the skin. Just kind of push it and let it kind of overlap the skin just a little bit. Otherwise it looks like he's wearing a wig. We don't want that. See my age spots turned out pretty good. Pretty happy with those. I use a smaller brush to go around the uh, sideburn there. Got like a random hair on the tip of my brush. Hello, hello. There we go. All right, sorry about that. My uh, card filled up. So anyway, I was just base coating the hair. So what I'm going to do now is I base coated it, I sealed it, um, and we're looking pretty good. So now I can, I took that towel away. You can kind of see what the skin tones actually look like now because the towel was causing my camera to redo, darken the exposure. So I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, when I do skin tones, I don't overshade. Um, I see a lot of skin tones are really, really punchy, and I don't like that. So this is how I do it. All right, so what I'm going to do next before I um, highlight the hair, so I'm going to do a little wash on it because um, it's a little brighter than I want to start with. So I'm going to do some oils. I'm going to take a little black. You only need like the tiniest amount of this stuff. And a little, um, this is Abtalung 502 uh, oils. And this is Shadow Brown. Just a little bit there. And then over here in my cup, I've got some uh, odorless, odorless um, mineral spirits. I got a small flat brush and I want to make a wash. So I'm going to take some of the black, some of the brown. I'm going to thin this down. We're basically going to stain this hair a little bit. I'm not just doing straight black. I'm going to a little brown too because the re reference photo I have, his hair's kind of got a brown undertone to it. So I'm gonna use most more mineral spirits than anything. So I got this kind of soupy soupiness here. You can just kind of see how thin that is. And we're gonna go through. We're gonna just kind of stain the hair a little bit. get on the skin tones, which I just did. Dang it. All right, I'll have to clean that up. Not the end of the world. I'll take some mineral spirits and just kind of Blend it in the hairline there. Yeah. The great thing about these is that I can just take the mineral spirits and reactivate it kind of play with it until it's where I want. Kind of weeping around this hairline. It may be a good thing. We'll see. <laughs> I'll take some just straight mineral spears and hopefully I can blend it into the skin. I think I'll be able to do that. 
it's my first time doing it this way with the, um, with the oil wash I'm trying to use these more and more I kind of I did them last time on the um, I did the use the oils on the Hulk's teeth and gums and I really liked the results so Uh, you were asleep for <clears throat> at least an hour. My son just woke up from a nap. I had red cocoa. I know, you had red and cocoa. It was really cute. Oops, I got too much. See that? So this is getting really just gonna get down in the crevices. I'm gonna go back over with white, my dry brush with white, all that detail will come out. Got a big old glob of oil paint there. I don't want that. And it looked like he had kind of a more of a dark streak in the middle here. So the trick with these, I gotta let it dry. I can't use a blow dryer because it'll just blow it all over the place. Some clean, just some plain mineral spirits and a clean brush. Let's see if I can clean that up around the edge of the hairline a little bit. Oops, that was a lot. Uh, so let's get a clean brush. There's just some straight mineral spirits. So I can't clean this up. Need a towel. Be able to reactivate those oils and blend it in. I don't mind that's on there a little bit. I just don't want to have a harsh line. It does help it kind of blend into the hair a little bit more. The mineral spirits won't affect the um, the matte coat either. You can go in there and kind of work with it. It's not going to mess it up. So yeah, there you go. So we're kind of bled over into the into the skin. I just took some mineral spirits and just softened it in, and now it blends into the hair to the skin real nicely. So that actually worked out. Okay, so where's my other brush? So now see, this is over here. I'm not digging the way this is looking right here. So I can I can go back and work this. I can add more, take it take it off. If it's too much, I can just add a little mineral spirits to my brush and take some off. It's too dark right here, I think. So I'm just going to have this mineral spirits, mineral spirits here that I use to mix the colors. I'm just going to go back in there, which it's not completely clean, but it's Got a little bit of a tint to it. a bigger brush and just kind of work it a little bit so it dry this brush is dry there's no there's nothing on it
and I'll work it to get the look you want and then this will drastically change once I go and, and highlight it you can see just with a dry brush it can help smooth things out a little bit getting some pooling that I didn't like and I'm just gonna go just going with the the direction of the hair just like that okay and come here it was a little darker And then I'm going to take that big brush again that's got nothing on it and just kind of blend it up. Just like that. Okay. And I'll do the mustache. Same kind of thing. His mustache is really white, but I want to add a little shape to it, a little, some uh, dimension to it. So we're going to go ahead and do the wash again. Like that. And take a clean brush where I got a little bleeding. And just clean it up just like that. So I'm going to let this dry for a little while, then we'll seal it. And then we can do the highlighting. Thanks to my buddy Floyd for showing me some oils when he was here. I've had them for a long time, just never really used them. I bought, them, bought all these oils with the intention of doing it on like spaceships and stuff. Um, You just get the gist. So once this is dried, I'll seal it, and then we'll uh, we'll highlight it. Hair dries after doing the oils. Um, I got to try to fix these glasses. They've broken into four pieces. <laughs> so um, now he doesn't have any eyebrows sculpted. So I'm going to see about not doing the eyebrows because he's got glasses on. So I'm not. Sure, you're not going to see him. Um, so they broke in half here and the arms broke off. So I gotta try to fix these guys. I'm gonna fix this part first. Um, I think my best bet is just to use some uh, thick CA. This is some gap filling CA. I'm gonna put some on a, actually I'll just put it right here on the paper towel. And then I gotta try to sand it smooth and stuff. So this. This may not look as good as what you're going to get, but I'm going to fix it the best I can because uh, I don't think Marcus can get me a new set. Like, like if you get me a new set like in a day, then that's one thing, but I'm going to put a little glue on my, on my toothpick here. That there. The problem with these is that it's brittle. Um, a squirt, some activator on the other side. And then we're going to put it together and see what happens. Just going to hold it there for a second. I 
There's very little surface area to glue, that's my problem. pretty good. And there's a little cutout. Well, you would see eyebrows. They're just not sculpted in. I'm going to kind of hand paint them in, I think. I'll have to look at some of the other references that other guys have done. Because there's nothing sculpted. So I'll just draw some in. Uh, so I'll go back and do some white again on that. Uh, and then we got to glue in the side, the little, these things. Luckily I have a little more surface area to glue these. So I'm not sure what these are going to look like when they're done and painted, to be honest. Um, these may not look the greatest. Ideally, I glue it and I can sand it down. Got the other leg of, of Hulk glued on, and he's drying, and the pants are on. It looks really good. Okay, so this is this side right here. All I'll do is once it's dry, it's solid, I'll sand that as best as I can. Hopefully it doesn't look like complete crap. Same with this side. So you can see they point in quite a bit, so I'm going to try to bend those a little bit so they, that they don't get any tension on those glue joints because, like I said, it's um, CA is brittle. before so what I need to do is get a little pair of pliers hold it right there I'm assuming that when these go into production, these will come as a separate piece that you'll have to put on yourself. Although there are some holes in the behind the ears for the, for the arms.
just broke in the middle. Shit. That's what I'm afraid of. There's like hardly any surface area there to glue. Glue it together. There's some pretty good tension there. Okay. This side seems to be fitting really good. I need to work on this side a little bit. Right, that's gonna that blue joint's gonna break. Yep, okay, that's all I gotta do. slightly different angle I think. Just towing in too much. Yeah, I had it towed in too much. I seemed to click into place better there. I can bend this back in now. A little bit. Okay, once I can get this kind of on there, without all that tension, then I'll re glue the center. Tube. Gotta make sure I don't touch anything. I'm gonna put a nice bead of glue on there. It's gonna be too much, but. second. Okay. Get out a spurt. Kicker. Let that sit for a second. Okay, so now this is dried pretty good. I'm gonna go seal this and then we can um, do the highlighting. Okay, so I sealed the hair, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some eyebrows. So I'm just taking this oil paint that I had mixed up before. And I'm kind of just adding some uh, brown, like a dark brown here. I'm just kind of winging it because they're really not sculpted in. And I'm gonna go in with some white and I'll add some highlights to it. So hopefully it doesn't look too weird. Just having to kind of freehand them. You're really not going to see them. They'll be behind uh, his glasses. So I'm just taking that oil and just kind of. I already had mixed up when I did, did the wash. I'm 
make sure they're, they're similar in shape. This eyebrow is longer than this eyelid. Brow seems to be a little bit longer than this one. So I'll seal it again before I go back and do the highlighting. But then I'll just draw some white some really thin white lines on top of this to give this be some shape. Not bad for a Polak, so uh, we'll let those dry and seal it, and then we'll do the highlighting. Okay, well the glass is dried, and they're on there pretty good. Um, we're just going to kind of do this like this. I'm looking at the ones that were painted before, and mine probably won't look as good as the other guys, because mine broke. Um, but we're going to make them look as good as we can. Um, we're going to paint those later. We'll, we'll tint them and then draw the frame around it and stuff, so... Um, but they're on there and they fit <clears throat> decently. They're a little crooked. So I'm going to have to tweak them a little bit. But I'm afraid to because it's, again, that CA is really kind of brittle. But uh, not too bad. Um, so let's take those off. Put those to the side somewhere where they don't break again. Sorry, my microphone's on the floor, so you probably can hear me. All right, so now let's do the highlights on the hair. Let's kind of clean up a little bit here. I'm trying to keep a clean work area as I go. So I'm put some stuff away. All right, I need to clean my brushes. I'm just going to use white, a little white. A touch of water. A flat brush. Towel here, and you guys have seen this before. It's a little dry brushing. Use just the flat part of the brush, they'll get just the tops of the hairs. And if you kind of go like this, you'll kind of get down into the hair a little more. So I usually start with like this, using the, 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 the tips of the bristles. And then when I want to get the real bright highlights, I switch to the flat part of the brush.
if I get some on the skin, no big deal. It's, it's acrylic. A little water or saliva, and it comes right off. Oops, I got too much meat. Some. I'm going to come this way a little bit too, just to brighten up a little bit overall. I'm going to go with the hairs a little bit. Right, just slowly build it up to get the look you want. So I'll come back when I'm done. So there's the hair and the mustache looking pretty good. Now you go in and draw in the um, the uh, eye the uh, eyebrows. So I'm just gonna go in again with some white, my lining brush, and a little bit of white on it. I'm gonna go in here and draw some. Don't want to cover up what I did with the oils. I just want to just like that. Add some highlights. Doing some downstrokes to mimic hairs. It's pretty convincing to me. I don't know. This side's easier because I'm right handed. If I turn 
it's upside down, go this way. There we go. That makes more sense, see? I learn something every every time I learn something new. Turn it upside down, go the direction that's more comfortable. Pretty good, I think. Um, I'm going to uh, base coat the eyes now too while we're here, and then I'll seal it, and then we'll put the eyes in. So I need some water. That's not water. <laughs> you be careful when you have a bunch of different cups with stuff in it. Okay. And for the eyes, we need my normal highlight skin that I use for eyes. A little drop of it. I use the same brush I just used. So I've got my little thing of highlight skin here. i got some water right here. And this I will use my Optivisor. His eyes are really small and squinty. So hopefully my head won't be in the way. So the Hulk is done. All I gotta do left uh, is once I finish uh, Stan's portrait is the base. And Hulk looks fucking awesome, I think. The best one yet. I've only done three, but still, it's my best one. <laughs> Squinty. Do some cleanup once I get done. I already have people asking me to either buy my kit of this, so I get a kit as payment, or to buy it painted um, from me, so we'll see. I know Jason Fielder really wants my kit. He might not want to pay what I want to ask for it, though. I get my little toothpick. I have done before. I bite the tip off. I just kind of use it as a scrubber to kind of clean up. Huh. My camera stopped recording, so I'm not sure where I, where it stopped recording. Anyway, I'm just cleaning up the edges from base coating the eyes. Seal this again, and then we 
put the eyeballs in, and then we'll do the mouth. But he's looking pretty good. All right, starting to come alive. Okay, so now we're gonna put his eyes in, and they're brown eyes. So I got, as before with Hulk, I got my little decals here. Just a little bit of water. And we're gonna put these in, and as these dry, I'll work on painting the um, the gums and the and the tongue. His eyes are super squinty. I'm gonna have him looking up just a little bit. Whoever he's. Sorry, my car, my my camera stops, keeps stopping recording. I don't know why. I just emptied my card. Anyway, my decal that I was putting on folded over on itself, and once that happens, they're trash. So you just got to start over. Let's get a new decal. Come on. Here we go. The problem is I had settings I had setting solution on it and I went to go move it and I picked it up instead of moving it so now I got it where I want. I'm just gonna do that. So now he's looking up a little bit. And we'll let that dry. And while that dries, we'll work on the mouth or the um, the teeth and the tongue. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna um, prime this stuff. I'm gonna drill a little hole in this. I got something to put the tongue on. I'm gonna put it on a stick. A toothpick. Hold it. I'm going to get the teeth on some skewers one second. All right, so we're going to prime the tongue and the teeth in some uh, Stalin Res uh, dull pink. This will be the base coat for the gums and stuff. Their brush needs a, another cleaning. This is pretty bright, but we're going to dull it down. And they give you two sets of teeth because they're pretty fragile, but I've already test fitted everything and it, everything fits in without having to heat it up and bend it. So that's nice. 
on the Hulk versus Thor, I had to warm the teeth up. It's like I bend it to get him to go into the mouth. I'll probably silly putting the mouth off and do a base coat of this for the mouth on the inside too. Okay, so we got that. Uh, clean this out. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna do some uh, oil washes on the tongue and the teeth, or the gums. And then we'll um, paint the teeth. So I'm gonna pause and come back. All right, so I went and sealed these with some matte coat and I got some uh, oils. I got this, this is coagulated blood. <laughs> so we're gonna use a little bit of this uh, to just kind of stain. Again, we're just gonna put a lot of mineral spirits here. And we're gonna stain this a little darker. Not so pink. So just put some bare mineral spirits on there, just kind of let it run around. So let this dry for a little bit. Do the same thing on the gums. Darken them down a little bit. Painting these teeth will take a while. I had to do them on the Thor versus Hulk. Three sets of teeth. It took me forever to paint all the individual teeth. But once I get the teeth done, I can do a wash and it'll separate the teeth. As you can see, as I put this, it just kind of runs everywhere, which is perfect. And with this being a matte coat, it just kind of just kind of goes everywhere, which is perfect. We're just staining that dull pink to bring it down some. It's now I got a nice kind of fleshy look to it. If it's too bright, just take some mineral spirits and kind of go over a little bit.
male, just a tiny bit of a um, brown. Got a little bit of brown here still left over. Maybe too red, too pink. As you get older, your gums kind of start to lose color anyway. I just add a little bit of brown to that red that I had going on. And they're looking a little dark, so I'm just going to take some more bare um, mineral spirits and kind of take some of it off. Like that, not took too much off. It was nice and go back and forth pretty easily. And once these dry, we'll seal them and then we'll start painting the teeth. I'm not just going to do that off camera, it's just going, it's really tedious. Going and painting all the individual teeth. It takes me a while. So there's that. Here's this tongue. That's looking pretty good. And once this dry, I'll do a little dry brushing to it and highlight it. Shadow right down the middle. Kind of right here. Just like that. Digging these oils, man. flat brush here and kind of blend it a little bit. Actually that kind of did the highlighting right there. Pretty cool. That's good stuff. You know, it seems to go back and work it and work it and work it. Sorry about my dog in the background. She's crazy. She's a tweenie. She suffers from the inbreeding of the two species. I'm just going to stop messing with it and let it dry. I had it looking pretty good and I messed it up. But it's really easy to go back and kind of rework it.
had it the way I wanted and I messed it up. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and I'm gonna come black back black. Come back in and blend that line right there. But I need this to let this dry just a little bit first, I think. I'm trying to work it while it's too wet. I'm fighting it. So I'm gonna just make a really hard line and let that dry for a few minutes. Um so once these dry, we'll seal them and I'll paint the teeth and then I'll go from there. Okay, alrighty. So I've got the um, glasses. Uh, I went ahead and well, they, they broke on me. I dropped them and they broke, so I had to fix them. Uh, but I got glued them back together, sanded them down. I put a, I put a coat of the um, 2K, 2K clear on them. Then I put some clear brown. Those are drying. Um, the gums look pretty good. I'm really happy with those and I sealed them. And I've also um, painted the inside of the mouth with the uh, Stano Res Pink. I sealed that. I also trimmed the decals. Uh, once this dries, I'll, I'll do a, uh, a wash on the inside of the mouth um, with that same kind of mix of red and brown. So right now, I decided to do the teeth in oils. Um, I just, <laughs> I'm just really enjoying using these. So I've got a mix of, again, the Aptolong 502 oils. I've got a little bit of Snow White and uh, just a hair of this um, dark mud. Just to knock the white down. I want pure white teeth. That looks weird. So just mix up this kind of off-white color here. And I got some mineral spirits here. And I'm just going in with this small brush. And I'm going to paint the teeth. Um, and then I'm going to uh, seal it. And then I'll go in and I'll put a little white highlight on them. And then we'll do a, I'll seal it again. And then I'll do a pin wash to separate the teeth. So right now I'm just kind of going in there and I'm not painting, I'm not worried about getting paint between the teeth because I'm going to do a wash to, to take care of that. I really like the oils because they don't dry so fast, unlike the acrylics. So you've got these thin right. they go on really nice, they cover well. I'm a fan really enjoy working with them. These act in the same manner that I wish acrylics did. Well, they stay, you know, you can have a wet palette, but I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm finding it's much easier to work with than acrylics. Let me get this out of the frame. I just want to focus on something in the background. I won't record this whole process because this will take a little while, but um, this is going much faster than it would with acrylics. When I did the teeth on the Hulk versus Thor, it took me like, to do the, the six sets of teeth, upper and lower, it took me like four hours. It was just crazy. It took me forever. So I'll just paint one set on camera. So they're kind of a grayish, you know, not pure white. It's what we want, we don't pure white teeth. So my goal, we just went out for a so couple soccer games tonight. It's, getting, it's a little late right now. But my goal is to have Stan's portraits done before I go to bed tonight. So that way, tomorrow, all I gotta do is finish the base. So I'm in the home stretch here on Stan's portrait.
can see why a lot of uh, old school miniature painters use oils to blend them. It's, it's very, it's e I don't want to say it's easy, but man, um, it's way easier than doing it with acrylics, in my opinion. So my buddy Daryl D in Hawaii, who just bought a bunch of my kits, he uh, was he's working on the, the blade, the Vision 2.0 blade, and he's doing all the skin tones with with oils. Well, he base coated in uh, acrylics, and then he's going in and doing um, all the va tonal variations with oils, and it's looking really amazing. I like a lining brush. I don't know. I always feel like I have more control over a lining brush. Put it in focus. Turned off autofocus so it stopped focusing on the background. There you go. One coat. They are covered. All right, so there we go. So I'll do the bottom teeth and then we'll let these dry and seal them. Okay, so I've been using my little wash that I had earlier with the red and that brown, and I added a little pink to it. And I've gone inside of the mouth and I've done a wash inside the mouth. And I'm doing, I've got some here mixed up again, and I add a little more pink to it, and just some. Uh, so I got the, uh, I've got this uh, co uh, coagulated blood with a little bit of the dark mud, and I add a little primer red. I did a wash inside the mouth of that, and I added a little bit of this magenta to it. You can see here I've got it really watery down and I'm gonna I'm just adding a little bit of uh, tone to the lips real subtle so this is mostly uh, mineral spirits and we're gonna just add a little pink to the lips here and I kind of got it everywhere so we'll go and clean it up that's the beauty about this stuff is that it cleans up real easily Got a little too much mineral spirits on my brush. Take some of it off. I'm just going in and just adding a little bit of tone to the, to the lips. Real subtle. We don't want to give them lipstick. Build it up.
it's okay if I get a little over, over the edge, so I'm just going in there and clean it up with a clean brush and some mineral spirits, and I'll blend it into this, into the lips. I did the upper lip. I can do a little more. Like that. Like that. So now it's got a little tone to them. Just a little bit. Okay. So now it's a little messy, so. Take a little on my Q-tip here. A little mineral spirits on a Q-tip. Just kind of blend this in a little bit. Super, super subtle. I just like this magenta. It's a really good kind of color. You thin it enough so you can still see the underlying skin tone. And a little bit of this red to it. Too. So you got a little too much there. No big deal. Now he's got lipstick. We're going to thin it out here in a second. Okay. Now I just got some mineral spirits on my brush here. I'm going to just kind of Soften this edge. I'm not sure if you're seeing that or not. Q-tip again, just kind of clean off some of the excess. And there we go. Now he's got some color to his lips. That looks really good. A little color inside the mouth. Once that dries, I'll go in and I'll seal this, and then um, I'll bit, once that's sealed, then I can put the teeth and stuff in once they're done. So that looks pretty good. Hopefully, you can see that. Here's the tongue after it's sat for a while. It actually looks really, really good. The only thing I see is I want to clean up. Uh, I want to. Make sure I get mineral spirits. I want to clean up this uh, blend a little bit. You can kind of see it's a little rough. So I'm just gonna take some mineral, a really slightly damp brush with some mineral spirits, really light. And I'm gonna come in here. I'm just gonna kind of soften this blend a little bit. I'm just gonna reactivate the oils and soften it up a little bit. Soften this up just a little bit.
I step on you a little bit. Is there I'm not digging, so I'm gonna try to soften it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, there we go. There's the tongue. We'll seal that and it'll look good. Nice and natural. All right, continuing on with the teeth, so I sealed these and everything, and now I've gone through and I'm just taking some of this kind of reddish brown mixture I got with my oils, and I am um, just getting between the teeth a little bit here. Come on. Here we go. So I got some mineral spirit, basically just, it's like a pin wash, so you kind of, you gotta dilute it just right, and then if you touch it, it kind of goes up into the into the spaces, and then any a uh, little over over um, anything that goes over once this dries, I'll clean it up with some uh, mineral spirits and a clean brush. Just kind of touch it down here at the base, and it kind of wicks its way up, just like that. It's a little darker than the gums, which is fine. So now we kind of got the spaces between the teeth done. And we'll let that dry for a little bit. You can't clean it up right away because you'll just be fighting it. You gotta let it dry a little bit. He's trying to focus on. Anything that's got text in the background, I want to focus on. <laughs> kind of wake up. Just like that. And we can do the we can do the back side, we're not gonna see it. the teeth too. Create a little shadow. I got a little clean mineral spirits here. And yeah, let's go clean up a little of the mess up. So it's thin enough, it dries pretty quick.
I'm coming from the top of the tooth down so that I don't get any that are red on the tooth. Just try not to. That's really it. Clean up these a little bit more. Went through there until we touch that up. Soften the paint there, and I went through the white. So to retouch that up. Maybe rushed it a little bit. At the end of the world. So where's my? I still have it over here. Touch the white up a little bit. This is why these take so long. It's tedious. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can need to touch the white up on these at all. I don't think so. Maybe a little bit here. So we're going to let those dry, and we'll seal them, and then we'll put those in the mouth. Let me just wait till tomorrow to put these in. There's a lot of paint on them. Looking pretty good, though. All right, so let those dry, and then um, once they're dry enough, we'll seal them and throw them in the mouth. What I can do now, though, is I've sealed the um, the eyes. I can do a little um, uh, water line. So I'm gonna grab some of this white. This red, make it look kind of pink. Just a 
hair that brown. So okay, I got this. Skin tone here. Right here, my palette. I'm just taking all these colors right here and just kind of making mixing a little skin tone right here. That's the plan, at least. His uh, left eye, or right eye, is open just a hair more. Not much, but just a little bit. Alright, so we got a little water line there. On the bottom lid. color mixed up is pretty damn good. I'm trying to get way down in the tear duct. You're not going to see this because there's glasses on, but still, we're going to do it. And then for the bottom side of the lid, we're going to take the same color and I'm just going to add more brown to it and make it darker. Create a little shadow for that eyelid. So I just took some brown and added it to my color right here. So now his eyes got some nice definition there. Looks good. Same thing on this side. And there we go. Pretty good. Not bad for someone who sucks at eyes. So now we're gonna let that dry. 
and then we'll give that a gloss coat and then the eyes will be done but first I'm going to um, actually yeah, I can gloss coat the eyes because um, inside of the mouth is still drying and once that's dry I can put the teeth and gums in and then I can uh, actually no I need to seal because I got the lips on there I need to seal the lips I haven't done that yet so I'm gonna let this dry I'll, I'll seal it with matte coat one more time install the mouth and then I can go through and gloss the eyes and gloss the inside of the mouth so he's really close to being done but uh, I'm really happy with this portrait um, yeah I think it looks good so uh, I'm gonna go back and seal this one more time and then we'll uh, I think I can put the mouth in we'll see so let me go do that I'll seal it and come back Okay, so now we're going to um, seal that and put the mouth in. And you got to put the lower teeth in before you put the tongue in. So I'm going to do that, which are these guys right here. And I need just a little drop of glue in there to kind of hold them in place. So I need my glue, which is right here. And I need a toothpick. And I wish I had a little piece of spare cardboard, but I don't. So I was going to. Put some on. Doesn't need a lot, just something to hold it in. It's not working. Uh, I need, I need, I need, I need. Let's put it right here. I don't like to use the palette for glue, but that's what I got close by right now. There we go. Now luckily I don't have to heat these up to put them in. They've got enough play in them. I need to put them in without having to heat them up. I'm just gonna use it. Q-tip to push them down into place. Actually, yeah. Pop's supposed to go fit in there. Maybe too flat. Let me see. Here's our tongue.
after just getting glue where the tongue goes without getting glue on anything else. I know I'm zoomed out quite a bit here, but I need about the don't need a lot, I just need to get it um, in the right spot. Okay, I've got some in there now. Okay, now this is tricky. It's going to want to roll around in there a little bit. Which I don't want it to do. There we go. Alright, so now get the tongue in. Here we go. Find clicked in. I felt it click into its spot. Getting there. And now you put some glue in the upper part of the mouth for the other teeth. I did test fit all this before I started painting just to make sure I knew that it fit and that I didn't have to heat any of it up or anything like that and also to know which order to put it in. So I'm just putting a bead of glue on the inside edge of where these teeth go so I don't want to use out in the front. It's been an interesting project because I haven't heard a whole lot from Marcus about it. Like while I'm working on it, usually he's like, "How's it going? Where's <laughs> any progress?" So I'm not sure what's going on. But um, I know Souls painted one up, and I've seen one other stand pa painted up. So I'm not sure if he's gonna have different options for different paint apps. I, I really don't know. All right. It's a tight fit once that tongue's in there. I'll have to touch up some of the white a little bit. From the tongue depressor. It's not the end of the world. So now he's got teeth in his mouth. So I'm going to wait to gloss, gloss cut the mouth in the morning. These oils are taking a long while to dry. So I'm going to clean up the teeth a little bit.
Looking pretty good though. Happy with that. Alright, so now he's got teeth. He's got those popped out a little bit when I put the top ones in. Alright. Looking pretty good. What I can do now is I can go ahead and gloss the eyes and they'll be done and then um, once the, these uh, oils dry overnight I'll gloss cut the mouth and then he'll be done. I have um, I'll bring the, the glasses out here in a second. I have um, tinted them and I added I went ahead and put another coat of gloss coat on them. So those will dry, those will dry overnight. I think once these teeth are touched up and gloss coated, they'll look really good. Alright, there's that. Let's clean up my brush. And as usual, I'm just going to use a little bit of um, MIG Ammo acrylic gloss for the gloss on the eyes. Uh, glossy varnish. I'll get a clean brush. Almost use this brush, which has all their the red oils in it. That'd have been bad. That would have been bad. The nice thing about the oils is they clean up super, super quick with some mineral spirits. Like your brushes get clean like instantaneously. I need to get a different brush for this. It's a small one. I only need a drop on my palette. socket like that. I'm kind of zoomed out right now but it's all right that dries that little milky look from the clear will clear up because it's little it looks milky at first but as it dries it it, it dries clear there's his eyes okay 
Looking good. Um, so again, I'm just going to let that sit overnight. Oops, I just made a big mess as usual. That was mineral spirits. Somewhere I have water. <laughs> I'm not sure where. I'll have to clean up my workbench again in the morning. It gets really messy as I kind of go back and forth between a bunch of steps. I just want to clear this, clean this brush out. So I'll do that in the morning. So there we go. So um, all that's left on him is to let the teeth dry overnight, gloss coat the teeth. Um, I may use my 2K clear on that. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Because I got to gloss the lips too. But I do that at the same time as the mouth. Um, and then uh, let me go show you his glasses. I'll go get those real quick. So let me get, get him somewhere out of, the, out of danger. I'll show you the glasses so far. So I didn't record any of the process on this because um, they, they were pissing me off because I kept breaking them. So hopefully they'll, they don't break again. <laughs> so um, after I fixed them and I got them to fit correctly, I sprayed, I sanded them with a thousand grit sandpaper to kind of fix my glue edges and they look okay. And then I sprayed my 2K clear, clear gloss on that uh, before I went to our nightly activities tonight. And it cured for about four hours, which got it not cured all the way, but almost. And then what I went in is I just did some clear uh, Mr. Color GX Clear Brown and sprayed it on until I got the tint I wanted. And then I let that dry for about an hour. And then I followed it up again with two coats of the 2K Clear, the Automotive Clear. So now this is tacky and it's drying. So this needs to cure overnight. And after that I can go in real delic delic delicately and paint the uh, frames and the arms of the glasses. And then these will be done. And then hopefully they don't break again. So because um, they look really good so um, stay tuned for the next part of this again this is gonna be a really long work in progress the first one I think like three hours this one may be longer than that but um, this is gonna finish up the project because um, after I gloss coat the uh, stand basically the major part left is to paint the base finish painting the base so should be able to do that tomorrow but we're getting there um, one more day of work and we should be there so looking good all right so Stan is now complete. I got his glasses on. Got his mouth in and I'm really happy with how he looks. So Stan's done. Yay. Um, super happy with that. Glasses I'm just gonna leave on because they're super fragile. As you saw, I was having a lot of trouble with them. Um, so we don't see his eyes, but you know, they're done. Um, the glasses turned out good considering how many issues I had with them having to fix them about three different times. So the, the last steps I did on Stan was um, this morning I just went in and glossed the, the, the touch of the teeth a little bit, glossed them over, glossed the inside of the mouth and the lips a little bit, and then painted the rims of the glasses with uh, just some black, and then uh, very carefully put them on his face. So the only way to see his eyes is if you take the glasses off, which I don't recommend, or if you look to the side but uh I'm really happy with that <clears throat> so now that's all, all that's left is to finish up the base so let me get set for that and we'll work on that okay so i'm gonna um since this really has two bases i'm just gonna record the process on the small part because it's easier to show on camera but it's gonna be the same steps for both parts of the base so that one to match so i'm gonna start off so uh, this has been base coated in uh just some satin black and as I usually do, I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to add some different tones to it this time. So I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to um, do a lot of airbrushing on it, I think, instead of just dry brushing. So I'm going to start off with this uh, semi-transparent warm gray, number five, which is like a middle tone gray. And we're going and add some, uh, just going to start shading this. Trying to stay away from the cracks, so just kind of random. I 
And this is a semi-transparent, so I'll see the black underneath it. But we're going to build up our values. And you can see I'm pretty far away. Just kind of want this pretty loose. I want to get tighter, just get closer. So I think you get the idea, so I'm going to do, go through and do this on both parts and we'll come back. Okay, so I got the big part done, and so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take the small part and put it up next to it, make sure that they look similar, and they do. So um, next step is I'm going to um, go in with another brighter tone and uh, add another highlight to it. Let me put the big part to the side. See, very big and very unruly. Okay, so back to the little guy. Uh, let me clean out my airbrush, get rid of this color. I'm going to stick with this semi transparent. Let me go up to. Um, That was number five. I'm going to do number three. Was that number two? Uh, there we go, two. So basically, you kind of do the same thing. Just going to add our highlight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to, um, once I get this kind of established, I'm going to go through with a bunch of transparent colors and just put some random tones on it. I kind of think I'd just do them gray. There's just one more highlight. Probably should just gone in with pure white. Let me do that after this. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to come in with some pure white. Not pure, uh, semi transparent white. Not pure white, but another semi transparent color. Bring that highlight way up because it's going to get knocked down when I go through and do the transparent tones on top of it. Just kind of hitting the high spots. I'll go ahead and hit all the cracks with some pastels to bring those out. I'm 
I wish I got in there. All right, I'm gonna do this to the uh, big part and then we'll go back with the semi-transparent pure white. All right, now we're going with the uh, semi-transparent pure white. Build up it again, build this up again. And then we'll start laying some other tones on top. This is not gray, that's a lot of paint, it's more than I need. It's not going to be bright, bright white, but it's going to give us a So what we're going to do is we'll start laying the other tones on top and we'll see all the shading through them. And then all the cracks we'll do later with pastels at the end. Spinning. I see a little more shape now. Yeah, this is super, super loose. Let's see, I think I may have missed this over a little bit with a little bit of this white. Let's see, let's do that. It's real light. looking pretty good as a base for the transparent colors. All right, I'll do that to the big part and then we'll come back and do some transparents. All right, so that's basically just the base for this. So now I've got a bunch of transparent, I got a bunch of colors out here, some transparent, some opaque. Um, for the opaque colors, I will just add some thinner and retarder to them to thin them out a little bit. So I'm gonna start with um, a lighter tone um, dirt by garagekits.us. It's kind of a, and I'm just going to kind of randomly put this on. Let me shake this up really good. And it has some thinner and retarder to it. Thin it out so it's not so opaque. I also got the sand color. See what that looks like actually pretty close yeah they're one number off um i go with the dirt i also got this dust color this dust color's got a little pink in it which i'm kind of digging but let's start off with the dirt so i'm going to add um I didn't even clean up my airbrush. I'll put that. A little bit harder. A little thinner. And I'm not, I am not like doing five drops of this, two drops of that. I'm just 
putting it in my airbrush. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I know a lot of guys are super critical about their uh, mixing. I don't. I just get it to the where to where I want it, and then I go. I ain't got time for that. So now, um, this is still a little opaque. I can tell my airbrush is still a little opaque, so I'm gonna add a little more thinner to it. Gotta be careful of the thinner though, because eventually what will happen is the uh, pigments will just separate from the binder, and then you just got a mess. You won't have it really paint. a little bit more retarder and also um, it'll just beat up on your surface it won't actually do anything so let's see what this does so I'm just going to come back here and just kind of spurt this on do its thing. And I'm way back here because I don't want to cover up that shading I did. Add some color to it so it's not just gray. And anything that's got a high point will get this a little harder. Anything under recess won't get it so hard, so they'll just kind of naturally create some highlights. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So just add a little color to it. Uh, I'm gonna do that to the big part and then we'll do the next color. Okay, so I do that to the big part. Um, now I'm gonna go in with, um, again, I just kind of winged this guy. So <laughs> I got a bunch of colors over here. Um, so that's in this medium rust. Let's add some yellow, some red to it. I'm gonna add some layers. Uh, honestly, I won't do layers because it's not soil, it's rock. It's not like you'd have striations, different layers of, um, if this was soil, I could do layers, you know, like darker to light, kind of like what I've done in the past, and I could do that, that mud effect, but um, since this is rock, we won't do that. So this is uh, garagekits.colors, garagekits.us, <laughs> Jesse's colors is like, oh, it's, it's, there's garagekits.us, and there's garagekits.us colors, or garagekitscolors.us. I'm not sure. It's two different names. One's for the kits, one's for the colors. Uh, medium rust. And we're going to do the same thing. I bought a bunch of my brush. I'm going to add, since this is an opaque color, I'm going to add some uh, retarder and some thinner to it. And I haven't cleaned my airbrush. I'm just going right in after this last color because it's okay. They're all going to be getting mixed together anyway. I've got quite a paint, bit of paint in my airbrush here because um, this technique can go through a lot of paint because a lot of it just goes into the air. The same thing here, we're just kind of, kind of, miss this on. I'm not going to do a lot of this, I don't think. I don't want too red, but I do want to warm it up a little bit. Hopefully that's showing up in camera. Just a little bit, and we'll do that to the big part. We'll come back. All right, next color I got in the airbrush is uh, GarageKits.us Nicotine Transparent Nicotine Yellow, and I'm just gonna kind of mist this on a little bit. Just shift the color just a hair.
I kind of blend in the previous two cars we did. I'm gonna warm it up, then I'm gonna go back in with some, probably we'll go in and do some dry brushing on this. Just like that. And then we'll do the big part, and then we'll come back. Okay, now I'm gonna go into some transparent transparent oil and kind of hit these cracks a little bit. And kind of get some of our dimension back. I like this color because it's, it's a warm, um, Being transparent when I'm this close, I gotta be careful because it'll pull really quick. So I don't have, have hardly any paint coming out. times a little rub through right there on the edge that's okay I'll hit it when I go do my dry brushing piece is cool because you can have you can display it with stand without stand you can do stand by himself you can do hulk by himself it's pretty neat it's a good concept i'm digging it yeah i get it i'm gonna get a, a kit for myself uh do i want to do another one i don't know problem is so dang big um storing it will be tough but if i do sell a kit basically if i if like if i if i get a kit as payment i don't paint it I sell that kit for basically what I would charge to do a paint job. So like this piece, since it's two quarter scale figures and one's a Hulk, I mean, the, I'd probably sell my kit for, you know, 15, 1600 bucks. So plus shipping. So that just adds a little shading to the cracks and stuff. It's not real drastic. It's not like going in with black. I like this because it's a, it's a warm tone. And I can go in and hit some of the, the lower areas too. Some of the recesses. So it's looking pretty flat right now, but once we go in and do the highlighting and stuff, it'll, it'll pop. I'm 
All right, so that's what we're gonna do here. We'll do some of the big part, which will take a while, so it's a big, a lot of cracks, lots of areas to cover. So uh, once I do this, on the other big part, we'll come back. I'll probably seal it after this step. Um, so I kind of got the tones I want going on. Um, and then from here, I may go in and start doing my dry brushing and start highlighting it. Um, actually, I'll seal it and then I'll do the pastels in the cracks again <clears throat> to darken them even more. And then I'll um, ow, take the silly putty out. Hopefully, I don't get any lifting and then we'll do some dry brushing. So once I get back, once I do this on the big part, I'll come back. All right, so these have both been sealed. Um, the big one's drying right now. So I'm gonna come in now and um, do pa some pastels in the cracks and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna start off with uh, raw umber. See what that does. And uh, just get some more shading going on. I'm just going with black. Let's see what this does. Yeah, that's not quite dark enough. There we go. Just kind of dab it in there. Give it a blow. Make sure your lips are dry when you do that. Otherwise, you'll spit on it and then you'll really be hurting. So even this is black, you can see through it. It's not like opaque. these like because it's got these cracks that kind of fade in and fade out just kind of take the pastel and run it down the rock a little bit like that and soften it up a base usually takes me a day um, that seems to be the average time for me to do well unless you're doing like the beast or the colossus base but something like this like a rock base, um, it can usually takes me about a day to do. <sighs> so on the big part, once that's dried, once the sealer's dried, I'll take the silly putty out, um, and hopefully I don't get any lifting. Been on there for a while. <laughs> Man, these pen pestles are amazing. I love them. You know, you try to, sometimes you try to just do things on the cheap, and those chalk pastels, I mean, they were working for a while for me, but these are really, really nice. So I'm going to just take this, I can take my, these pastels and kind of Go in and refine any tones I want. So I'm going to do this because this will take me quite a while, but I think you can kind of see the difference there.
So that means they're really shallow. So if I want to blend something and I don't want to kind of get pastels anywhere else, I just kind of take my brush and brush it off of a, on a towel or paper towel. I can take it and just kind of do that and feather it. I think here I got a little excess. Starting to look really good now. Now we're starting to look good. I could have probably skipped that whole oil step, but you can actually see um, a little bit of the green tinge from it along the edges. So it's very subtle, but it's there. So it's like sometimes you do a step like, oh, should I really do that? But then you look at the overall picture and it's like, yeah, it looks really good. Just adds another little subtle tone to everything. <laughs> so I'm glad I did it. All right, so I'll do this for a while uh, on both parts and we'll seal it and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so it took about mm, 20, 30 minutes, but this is what we look like now. Really nice, lots of sha lots of shape and stuff. Um, went and did all the cracks, just kind of hit this, the low areas. Um, actually, I missed a few right here. So I'm gonna go seal this now. And then while the sealer dries on this one, I'll do the big part, the same step here. And that'll take a very long time because it's just so dang big and there's a ton of cracks. <laughs> um, and then um, uh, we'll seal, then we'll, I made, I don't know, I kind of like it. I don't know if I should do any dry brushing or not. Um, maybe some very, very light dry brushing just to kind of hit the very high spots. But um, I'm really digging the way this looks. So uh, we'll seal this, we'll do the big part, and then we'll see where we go from there. All right, so I've been working on doing the pastels on the big part, and I decided to go and take the silly putty out. And kind of what I thought would happen, I got a lot of kind of chipping and lifting her along the edges of where I silly puttied. So I'm gonna go seal this, and then I'm gonna touch up all the edges, and then we continue with the pastel work to blend it in. Um, that's one reason I don't like like silly putty. It, um, like here, I can show you. Like I got some over here um, that I missed. But as you pull it up, it it lifts the paint, and I've always had this issue with it. Um, if this was tape, I wouldn't be having this problem. Um, I don't know why, but it always lives for me. So I'm gonna go in and uh, clean up these edges. And then um, I'll use the pastels to kind of blend that in since this has so many different tones on it. I'll just get a color that's relatively close to it um, and touch it up. You can see as I pull it up, I get little lifts and chips here and there. Especially where the silly putty is thin. That seems to be the issue. So, it's not the end of the world. I knew I'd have to do this. It's just really time consuming and <laughs> annoying. Um, I probably could have, I'm trying to think of another way I could have done this. Uh, I really don't know, to be honest. Um, liquid mask, but it probably would have had the same results. Just some lifting. So what I need to do is I need to get this out I need to um, clean up the, like get all the loose stuff that's kind of coming up. And then I need to seal it really well to kind of get those edges to stay down. And then um, touch it up with some paint. And then continue on with the pastel work and then it should all blend in just fine. At least that's my, that's my theory. <laughs> we'll see. So there we go. Yeah, so like right here, just kind of lifted. <sighs> you got all these rough edges. So I know a lot of guys swear by silly putty, but man, it's I fight it all the time. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> <sighs> so we go clean this up. Just a little bit right there. I'm gonna clean up these edges. I think I got it all. I thought I had it all and then I saw all that over there. <sighs> <sighs> so 
So we'll go seal this center section with some uh, matte coat. And then I'll be able to touch up these edges and then continue on with the pastel work. So that's what we're doing there. Okay, I'm done with the pastel work on the big part and it's looking pretty good. Uh, I touched up the edges a little bit where the slate putty was and I've gone through and added the pastel to the... I think it would have been a better idea on this if it had two light sources. I'm going to turn off these lights to show you what the light feature looks like. And then we'll turn that away. So it's really bright right here. And I've got, there's cracks on the outskirts here. Um, they're there, but they're pretty dim. So I think it would have been a great idea to have maybe have a light source here and a light source there. Um, I mean, it's cool, but it's not as bright as I think it should be. Um, but it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, you can kind of see it down in the deep cracks. Uh, really good. It's coming up through those areas. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's neat. It's got a nice glow to it. So it's just really bright right in the middle. So I'm going to go seal this again. And then I, I think I may do just a very little bit of light dry brushing. And then uh, I think the base will be done. And if that's the case, then um, I dare say it, he may be done. I'll, I'll give everything a once over after I seal this and uh, decide if I want to do some dry brushing on it. Because um, I'm digging the way it looks. So we turn these back on got some nice punch to it it doesn't have that um, I like the I like the the, the tones uh, nice warm kind of sandstone looking rock it's not the normal gray that I, I do so I like it it's a nice change so uh, we'll seal this and then go from there it's looking good okay well I am going to consider this done uh, I think it looks really good um, seal the bases and uh, I'm really happy with it. I think there's enough punch and contrast in there. Um, I thought about dry, doing a little bit of dry brushing, but I want to keep this tone. So um, I'm going to call this done. Um, super happy with it. So let's take this off the, tri the tripod and just do it kind of once around handheld. So it'll be a little shaky. One second. So pretty, pretty happy with this. Looking good. Big and stands glasses. Those are a major pain. You see the age spots there. We did lots of layers of those. I think the bases look good. Some nice tonal variations in there. Bring my exposure down just a little bit. But uh. Yeah, super happy with this. Well, the very, very last thing I did um, was to um, just add a little bit of green to Hulk's hair. I had forgotten to do that, so I just did that. That looks good. So now it's not just a solid mass of black. Yeah, I really like this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll take pictures of this tonight, and then everyone can, uh, once I post them, everyone can uh, tell me how they've all been Photoshopped and <laughs> that, they, they, uh, that he possibly can't look the same way in the photos as he does in person but I hate to tell you guys they do um, so I'll try to do um, maybe I'll do a video of how I process my photos because I get accused all the time of photoshopping myself which I don't um, which is kind of frustrating so I spent a lot of time taking photos and lighting and stuff and then all these morons tell me how I photoshop everything it would take way more time to photoshop something than it would for just me to paint it correctly uh, trust me um, so yeah, but digging it, really happy with this piece, um, cool concept, so you can, you know, display them separately, Hulk by himself is really impressive, and then obviously Stan by himself is this really cool piece too, so I'm not sure where the options are, uh, for the production pieces, I don't know, this has to go to China, but, um, I'm not sure if like, like if Marcus is just selling a Stan or just a Hulk or if you have to get the combo. I, I really don't know what the options are, but um, there you go. I think he looks really, ha really good. I'm really proud of this piece. So uh, this is a long work in progress video. Um, I'll start getting that uploaded. And uh, thanks for watching as always. Catch you guys next time. Bye.